The base commander at Fort Hood says soldiers who wish, witnessed a shooting rampage that, led, that left 13 people dead reported that the gunman shot, shouted Allahu Akbar before opening fire at the Texas Post. In an interview, his aunt, no, Noel Hassan of Falls Church, said, she, said that he had reported to her that he endured name-calling and harassment about his Muslim faith for years after the 9-11 attacks and had sought for several years to be discharged from the military. I know what that is like, she said. Some people cannot take it. Some people can take it. Some cannot. He had, he, she's, she's talking about anti-Muslim harassment. He had listened to all of that, and he wanted out of the military, and they would not let him leave, even after he offered to repay for his medical training. It's been reported that he was mortified by the idea of having to deploy, Mr. Hassan said. Uh, this is uh, his cousin. He had people telling him on a daily basis the horrors they saw over there. This fellow, a psychiatrist, he saw the worst of the worst of it. There are layers within layers within layers of this, and, uh, and uh, to to try to unravel some of them, we've we've talked for the last two hours about the the Muslim dimension of this and how, as a talk show host, I'm getting all of the emails that are going to the right wing talk show hosts. Uh, of guests willing to come on their program and say this is uh, Al Qaeda, this is a Muslim conspiracy, uh, this guy was an advisor to Obama. That's already been debunked, but there's still a guest out there uh, who's who's uh, on right wing talk radio. I guarantee you, as we speak right now, um, we've we've had some uh, considerable discussion about that. I'm fascinated by the fact that this guy was a psychiatrist and was uh, exposed to some of the real horrors of this. Dr. Peter Bregan has been on this program before. Harvard-trained psychiatrist, practices in Ithaca, New York. He's a former full-time consultant at the National Institutes of Mon Mental Health. He's the author of numerous books, including Medication Madness, the Role of Psychiatric Dr Drugs in Cases of Violence, Suicide, and Murder. His website is Bregan, B-R-E-G-G-I-N dot com. Dr. Bregan, welcome back to our program. Well, I'm glad to, to be with you. It's a sad day for America, and we need to acknowledge that, but I'm very happy to be with you. Thank you. Um, your thoughts on a psychiatrist, let, let's deal with this at several different levels. Um, your thoughts on a, a Muslim snapping in the face of anti, years of anti-Muslim sentiment uh, and c consulting, uh, doing psychiatric consultations with people who just came back from killing Muslims. Um, your thoughts on a psychiatrist who snapped and killed people. Uh, your thoughts on the possible role of psychoactive medications in this? If I can just dump that whole thing in your lap and let you run with it. All right. Well, there's a whole bunch of different things to talk about. I mean, it, it does seem that he took some inspiration from uh, is Islamic violence. You know, he did he did shout Allah Akbar, and he apparently was giving away uh, Qurans before uh, shortly before he committed these uh, the, this violence. Right. Not unlike Tim, Tim McVeigh being an evangelical Christian and praying before he blew up Oklahoma City, the federal building. And he, he also had been making a lot of comments about the war and also about, uh, that, that, you know, that talked about the um, <clears throat> uh, Muslims fighting back. But right. I do want to emphasize his, his, the psychiatric aspects, which is what you have me on the show for. And I, I think there's just a whole ton of psychiatric issues that come up here. First, as a, as a loner, a guy who, and who's been uh, depressed for a lot of years, apparently upset for a lot of years, there's a very good chance he's self-medicating on psychiatric drugs. He certainly had access to them as a psychiatrist. Don't you have detail men and women the, from the drug companies who come by almost every day and say, here, you want some free samples? Oh, you get them that way. You get them when the when patient comes and gives you back his bottle of drugs because he wants a different kind, and he you know gives you what... what uh, what he's been on. So the access is unlimited. There's no problem at all getting, getting the medications. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is that these kinds of psychiatrists, especially the military trained ones, all they know is psychiatric drugs. They don't know about counseling. I've actually given workshops at both the places he was trained. At the, uh, he got his medical degree at the uh, Naval Medical Center in Bethesda, and I've given a workshop there for psychiatric residents and mm -hmm. staff. And at Walter Reed's, where he got his psychiatric training, and I've also given workshops there. And the the uh, young men in training there, and young women in training, they don't know anything about human beings. They don't know anything about relationship. They don't know anything about helping people with stress. They wouldn't know what in the world to do with somebody who'd been through the horror show of war and wanted to sit down with them and be kept company and relate to them. 
they know about making a diagnosis in a few minutes and giving psychiatric drugs. Are you saying, Dr. Peter Bregan, as a psychiatrist and as a person who teaches psychiatrists, that psychiatrists are not taught psychology? Not at all. In fact, um, <laughs> I, was, I was talking to, to, to social workers at Syracuse University last night, and I told them if they had read three self-help books, they knew more than the psychiatrists they were referring their patients to. Psychiatrists oh. nowadays are, are taught in an extraordinarily mechanical way that everything that goes wrong with you is a biochemical imbalance, which is a totally fictitious uh, promotional campaign by the drug companies. I can actually trace it back historically to when it started. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't have any idea about relating. They're not any good at relating. They're not very caring people. One of the one of the uh, TV shows today was asking, you know, how could a man from a caring profession do this? Well, psychiatry is no longer a caring profession. And I can see that certainly he could have been uh, freaked out and distressed and so on by listening to the soldiers coming back with uh, the horrors of what they had been through. But as a psychiatrist, he would be ill-equipped to really empathize with them and to really help them through their stress, nor would he even be... Uh, given that opportunity, his job would have been simply to dispense uh, pills. Right. So, uh, so, don't psychiatrists have among the highest suicide and drug abuse rates of all professions? They, they absolutely do. They, uh, they absolutely do. And I, I think it's partly who gets attracted to the profession, but I also think it's because it's a depression that deals with human unhappiness without having much to offer. Right. So it makes it a kind of a, of a really desperate situation. Uh, last year, I was, uh, gave a plenary session at the biggest national stress conference uh, that's put on every year uh, on combat stress and, and the mm -hmm. armed services. And today I was talking with Bart Billings. He's a retired colonel, clinical psychologist, expert on the stress uh, issues. And he pointed out that, that, uh, that these psychiatrists, they don't really know anything about stress, and they don't really know anything about evaluating other human beings for what they're going through. And he thought that, in fact, uh, um, this uh, psychiatrist was an example of somebody who should have been picked up very easily by his colleagues as having a potential for violence. Right. I mean, he's a guy who doesn't want to be in the service. He doesn't want to go to war. I heard from one source he'd hired a lawyer to keep yes. from being deployed. That's been confirmed. Yeah, all right. He's making these angry remarks. Uh, he's identifying uh, with Islamic violence. And while he's reported up lines, apparently, um, absolutely no one does anything about this, uh, this psychiatrist. And that's right. just, as Bart was pointing out to me, he said, he knows this. He's, he's headed um, health facilities in the service, and he said, these guys, they don't know which end is up. They're not, they're not equipped for it. Issues. Dr. Peter Bregan, we have less than a minute left. The, the role of, of uh, SSRI drugs in particular, these uh, antidepressant drugs, do they actually work in dealing with depression if he was on them? And it seems, uh, it, my, my recollection is most of the school shooters have been on these SSRI drugs. Well, many of them have been on it. Um, I know for, for a fact that the main school shooter, you know, at Columbine, Eric mm -hmm. Harris, because yeah. I was an expert in some cases sur surrounding him, that he was definitely taking Zoloft and had it in his bloodstream on autopsy. So don't believe what they tell you in USA Today, that he wasn't taking psychiatric drugs. He right. was on them on the day of the shooting. There is no doubt that psychiatric drugs, particularly the SSRIs like Zoloft and Prozac, can drive you to violence and suicide. Well, and in fact, they're, they're, they're labeled as suicide being one of their primary side effects. Right, and if you read deeper in the label, they even mention hostility and aggression. And I, I give 50 cases of me in medication madness in yeah. detail of people driven mad by... Okay, by the book Medication Madness, the doctor, Peter Bregan, bregan.com, the website. Doctor, thank you for being with thank us. Thank you.